Roseanne, you know, bring it into your industry. So, you know, in the mm -hmm. political wor world, you're like, well, uh, uh, I don't know who's behind it. The people that are behind it, you know, some people will say, well, every war was financed by bankers. All mm -hmm. the way back to Rothschild, to UK, to this, to colonialism, blah, blah. everything's been financed by bankers. So it's a banker's war, right? Yeah. Industrial, military industrial complex. No, it's the bigger guys, the Koch brothers. They choose it. No, it's the Soros. No, it's this. In Hollywood, you know, the, the people that look at it from the outside, they say, wow, you know, these guys must have been, you know, great on how to make it up. And I remember I was working with this one guy at Bally's and super good looking guy, 6'5", blue eyes, white guy, all this stuff. And I'm spending time with him. And all of a sudden, one day we go partying with this guy, realize how he made his money, which was crazy. But <laughs> he used to be in Hollywood. And he says one day he gets invited to a party with uh, uh, David Giffen's house. And he's doing work. He's doing movies. He says, shit, we're about to make it. So him and his best friend go over there. They're both good-looking guys in their 20s. And I say, David wants you upstairs in his room. So they go to his room. And David's like, this is the story he's telling me. Now, whether there is truth to this or not, this guy didn't seem like he needs to bullshit a story like this. Mm -hmm. But he says, so David says, hey, you guys, I got a movie. I want to put you guys in. Great. Yeah, but I need you to please him right in front of me. And this guy's like, What? Yeah, I need you. And his friend's like, dude, I'm down if you're down. Dude, I want to get a job in a movie. He's like, hell no, I'm out. So he left. He left the industry. I'm done with it. For us from the outside watching in, and you hear stories like uh, Weinstein, or you hear stories of Giffen, or you hear stories about these guys, how, how dark was it back in the days in Hollywood? And how much of this was happening? And how'd you get past it? For a person that wanted to come up and compete, you know, because... In politics, you have to do favors to find a way to go up, right? The favors could be different kind of favors that you do. How dirty was it and how much of that has changed today within Hollywood? Well, I never, for some reason, well, I always say it's because nobody ever wanted to fuck me. That's not true, Roseanne. That's not true. I'll take you down right now. That's bullshit. Roseanne, test me. Well, you know, I have no power in Hollywood. So yeah. that's what you think. You <laughs> step into my office, Roseanne. We're, we're going to get through your own show, baby girl. No, I'm talking about, you know, uh, them. So All I right. didn't have to, you know. I never... Don't put it past me, Roseanne. I'm just letting you know right now. <laughs> uh, Legendary story that Christ, would be. I'm right, so Rob? Old. That shit left <laughs> a million years ago. But uh, uh, I didn't, uh, that didn't have nothing to do with me. I didn't have to, I used to have a good joke about it that I say, you know, what, do, who do, well, it's not, but it <laughs> won't work here. But uh, no, I didn't have to do that. I say, uh, I was uh, one of the few that made it on talent. <laughs> but uh, no, I, uh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> But no, I didn't get, and none of that happened to me, but I knew people that it did happen to. And because I was working uh, to uh, help kids, uh, kids who were, you know, in slavery and from drugs and sex and stuff in Hollywood, they had run away to be stars, and, you know, that's what happened to them. They'd get mixed up like that and be used. Uh, I heard their stories, and I knew it was common, and I knew that uh, it's just a den of iniquity. And uh, I heard from other people that, you know, everybody knew somebody who had to do that kind of deal. But especially it seemed to be in the movies and the uh, music. But TV, uh, I didn't, I don't know, it probably went on, but I, I didn't. I had to bully my way onto TV, though, but they didn't want me at all. What do you mean by bully? Well, they didn't want to do a show with me in it. Did they try to recast you, like Rosanna? Who's, they, who's they? The network. Oh, okay, got it. Suits. They didn't. They yeah. They were like. Uh, I remember the day I was shooting my pilot. My sister was there, and there were she said she was standing next to all my agents, and the producers of the show, and. They didn't know if she was my sister, of course. I always have a plant, see? Good, good. And uh, uh, she, says, she, she says that they go, who's going to watch this show about two fat people, two fat and a loud this and that? She told me. I'm, wow. Yeah. That's how they roll. Yeah. But then, you know, I knocked Cosby off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, but I knew. 
I knew uh, American people wanted to see themselves not degraded, mm -hmm. and they wanted to see themselves portrayed as kind of heroic, because I did when I mm -hmm. was watching TV coming up. But, uh, you know, I had to force it, and they uh, and then they had to eat my dust. And they didn't like doing that neither, and they, they never liked it. But I'd be like, you know... I, I relished it. I mean, I have to say, as a high school dropout, telling them people from Harvard, oh, it was a joy. <laughs> it really was That's a cool. joy. And Roseanne, who, who was somebody you met that was kind of like, you know, when you're making it, you're, then you're like number one and you're making a million and a million a week? Who was who was the celebrity you met for the first time? Like yeah, that's kind of cool. Like I'm having dinner with X Y Z. I'm you know I'm having. Oh, who I was met that all person? my idols. I mean, uh, that was the most amazing thing. Uh, well, I mean, I could name them off, but I forget everybody's name. But uh, number, uh, I can't even say number one. But as a comic, to meet all my comic idols and hang out with them and have a few drinks and smoke a joint and you know, jam jokes with. I, I got to meet Richard Pryor. I got to meet and hang with Dick Gregory, who was a god, you know, yep. a god. Mm. And he ran for president on the same ticket I ran on, and that's why I ran, because of Dick Gregory. But, uh, uh, you know, Phyllis Diller was a friend, Joan Rivers, Rodney Dangerfield. He left me his pot in his will. Oh, get no. out of it. Yeah, I got, I got his pipe and his marijuana. And, and, and for did my, you smoke it or did you keep it? No, I didn't dare smoke it. I got it in my office. God, that's great. Yeah, and, uh, you, you know, God, I'm forgetting everybody. What about George Carlin? Yeah, I loved him, too. Met him. And Roseanne did, was... um. He's a uh, genius. Oh, yeah, he was... Yeah. Uh, Everything I, he said... Then I was just gonna so say, it seems like right it seems now. like oh this God. is sort of like what you're heartbreaking war, he goes, on right yeah, now. We're, is, we're a warlike yeah. people. He's like, if you're brown, we like to bomb brown people. He's like, if you're brown, you better watch the F out. Yeah. He was the best. No, he was funny till the end. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.